Hi, this video is to uh, explain a little bit about angle relationships, the, some of the basic ones, um, how you can find the measurement of an angle just by knowing other angles. Um, so you have to kind of understand about acute obtuse angles, um, like if this joke makes sense to you, why is the obtuse triangle always upset? Because it's never right. Uh -huh, dad joke. Um, but we're talking about uh, complements and supplements, adjacent and vertical angles. All right, so uh, let's just jump into it. Okay, here's another joke for you. Hi, you're an acute angle. Acute angles are smaller than 90 degree angles. He's saying thanks for the compliment. But what you might not understand is these two angles are actually complements of each other because they add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so uh, if you didn't understand that joke, maybe you do now. Okay, now our... Uh, Purpose today is to identify angles based on the relationships to other angles. And the first is complementary angles. And that happens when you have two angles that both add up to 90 degrees. So if you have a 90 degree angle cut into two separate angles, you know that when you put them back together, they add up to 90 degrees. Right? So the definition of complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so that's the definition. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Now, supplementary angles are angles that, um, when you put them together, look at this straight angle right here. We all know that it's 180 degrees. So when I cut this into two angles, I still know that those two angles add up to 180 degrees. So... Since the measurement of angle 1 and angle 2 equal 180 degrees, I know that they are supplementary. Okay, so the definition of supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180 degrees. Okay, and one thing you got to realize is angles don't have to be adjacent. They don't have to be uh, together in order to be supplementary or complementary. All right, so the next is vertical angles. And vertical angles... They are formed by two intersecting lines. Okay, so these two lines intersect, and when they do, you create four angles. So vertical angles are on opposite sides. Okay, so what I mean by opposite sides is angle one and angle three, one's on the left, one's on the right. Angle two and angle four are also on opposite sides, one's on the top, one's on the bottom. And so when I look at angle one and angle three, I know from the previous slide that angle one and angle four are supplementary. That means that they add up to 180 degrees. This right here is a straight angle. Okay, so since they add up to 180 degrees, I know that if angle one is 50, then angle four must be 130 degrees. Okay, because they have to add up to 180 degrees since they're supplementary. And, you know, the, the way that we know this is true is because that's a straight line right there. That's a 180 degree straight angle. And when I add them up, it has to be 180 degrees. Okay, now another thing is when you look at angle 3, you'll notice that it's also supplementary to angle 4. So angle 3 and angle 4 also add up to 180 degrees. So angle 4 is not going to change. Angle 4 is still 130 degrees. So that means that angle 1 and angle 3 must be equivalent. Okay, These two angles have the same measurement because they are both supplementary to the same angle 4. Right. So that's one reason why angle 1 and angle 3 have to be congruent. So we also know that angle 2 and angle 4 are congruent for the same reason. Okay, so angle 2 is supplementary with angle 1, which means that angle 2 is 130. Right? Angle 4 is supplementary to angle 1. We already know that that's 130. So angle 2 and angle 4 must be congruent also. Okay, so the um, these properties just allow us to assume whenever I have two vertical angles, I know by um, the properties that they are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent. They're equal in measurement.
Okay, now the next one is adjacent angles. If I have two adjacent angles, here's an example of two adjacent angles. Three things have to be true. One, they have to have the same vertex. Two, they have to share a common side or a common ray because sometimes a side can be a line segment. And three, they have to have no common interior points. All right, so if we look at the angles at the right, you'll see that there's the vertex. And that is the vertex for angle one and for angle two, right? Here is angle one. Here is angle two. They both have this one right here as a side. Okay, so that's that's one thing. Next, they have to have a common ray. Um, I'm sorry, I, I showed that they have the same ray, but they both have the same vertex right here. Now, they both have the same ray, which is the one in the middle. And, sorry, spit through that one. Uh, no common interior points. Now, here's what that means. That means angle one, here's the interior points. This is the... Um, the, the angle that is in between the two rays. Okay, so that's called the interior of the angle. And then angle two, here's that interior. Right? Now, those two do not inter, uh, do not overlap. So that means that they could be adjacent angles. Okay, so in order to be adjacent, they have to, um, satisfy all three of those requirements. Okay, so just a little bit of a quiz. Here are nine pairs of angles, and in which ones do you have adjacent and which ones are not adjacent? So um, let's look at number one. Here's angle one, here's angle two. Uh, go ahead and pause it, because I'm going to go through these answers kind of uh, quickly, but pause it if you want to answer it and explain your answer. Um, without having the answer shown. Okay, so the first one, those are adjacent. And the reason why they're adjacent is, first of all, they share the same vertex right there. And secondly, this is the side that they both share. Okay, so on to number two. So go ahead and pause it. The answer is, these are not adjacent. And the reason is, they don't have the same vertex. Okay, so here's the vertex for angle one, and here's the vertex for angle two, not the same angle. Okay, and uh, secondly, um, just because they share the same side right here doesn't automatically mean that they're adjacent. Here's the interior of angle two, here's the interior of angle one. There's no overlap, but in order to be adjacent, all three of these have to be satisfied, all three of these requirements. Okay, so angle three, uh, number three, sorry, go ahead and pause it. So angle three, those are not adjacent. Okay, they do have a common vertex. They do share this ray right here, but unfortunately there is overlap on this one. Okay, so here's angle one, and then here's angle two. You see how there's overlap? Okay, so number four. Look at those two angles. Those are not adjacent. And there's two reasons here. Uh, for one, they don't share the same vertex. Here's the vertex for one. Here's the vertex for two. And also, you have four rays here, so that means that they don't share a ray. They don't share a side. Okay, so, and the fact that you, you don't just have three rays, that's kind of a giveaway. Okay, but if you look at number three, that's not always the reason why they're adjacent, right? There's three rays here, but they're not adjacent because there's overlap. Okay, so look at number five. All right, number five, those are adjacent. Okay, no overlap, common vertex, common side. Okay, number six, sorry, I gave that away. Uh, number six, those are not adjacent. Okay, so they're not adjacent because they don't share a ray. They do have a common vertex, but Angle one, angle two, there's four rays there. Okay, so look at number seven. Those are not adjacent. Okay, they don't share a ray. They do share a vertex. There is no overlap, but they don't have a common side. Okay, now number eight. Those are 
not adjacent. They don't share the same vertex. Okay, so this one, a little bit of an explanation. Um, these are angles that are contained within a, a parallelogram. Okay, so there's the vertex for one, there's the vertex for two. Those are um, not the same vertex. Okay, so, um, and if it's hard to see what those angles are, there's angle two, there's angle one right there. They do share a side. Okay, but the overlap and the uh, different vert vertices um, is why they're not adjacent. For number nine, those are adjacent. So on to the uh, next one. So to find the missing angles, so you have number one, you have angle one and angle two, where angle one is 75 degrees. Okay, so find angle two. So I'm going to give you a hint. They're both supplementary. So angle two is 105 degrees. Because when I take 75 and I subtract it from 180, you'll get 105 degrees. Right? 105 plus 75 is 180. For number two, if you look at these two angles, they're part of the four angles that are uh, formed by two intersecting lines. Okay, so go ahead and solve that one. So if measure of angle one is 55 degrees, those two angles are vertical angles, so they are congruent. Measure of angle two is 55 degrees. Okay, for uh, number three, angle one and angle two are complementary. So find angle two. All right, so since angle one is 27 degrees, Remember, complementary angles add up to 90, right? So we would subtract 90 minus 27, okay? So this would give us 63 degrees. Uh, number four, angle one and angle two are supplementary. So that means they add up to 180 degrees, right? So if they're supplementary, if angle one is 30 degrees, angle two would be? 150 degrees. Okay, now this is to point out also that, that since angles are supplementary, they don't have to be adjacent to be supplementary. Okay, so that was the point in that one. All right, now if we have a trapezoid, that means we have a quadrilateral with four angles. Okay, so here are your measurements of your four angles, and we need to find which angles are complementary which angles are supplementary. So go ahead and pause it. Okay, so if you look at angle um, A and D, you'll know that those two add up to 90 degrees. So those are complementary. Okay, so to find the supplementary ones, we find angles that add up to 180 degrees, and those are D and C, Okay, 150 and 30, that's 180, and A and B, 60 and 120 is 180. So this is a little exercise to kind of point out the fact that they don't have to be adjacent to be complementary and supplementary. Okay, and then um, on the last uh, slide here, we have angles that are uh, found in common everyday objects. So this is kind of uh, similar to a... TV tray or a picnic table, whatever. So we have four angles that are formed by two intersecting lines, and you're going to get one angle. Try to find angle two, three, and four. Ready, go. Okay, so since we know that angle one is 110 degrees, and angle one and angle two together are supplementary, Right, they make a straight angle, that's 180 degrees. So we know that angle two is 70 degrees. Okay, they're supplementary. Okay, so angle three, a couple ways that we can figure out angle three. And one would be, since we know that angle one and angle three are vertical angles, we know that vertical angles are always congruent. Okay, they're the same measurement. So angle three is 110 degrees. Okay, but notice that it's also supplementary with angle two. So once we found angle two to be 70 degrees, we now can subtract from 180 to get angle three. So a couple ways to actually answer that one. And then angle four, 
we know angle four is vertical with angle two, but it's also supplementary with those other two. So let's go with the short, easy answer. Angle four and angle two are vertical, so that means that they're the same measurement. Okay, so angle four is 70 degrees. So hopefully that was a helpful exercise in um, uh, angle relationships, and thanks for watching.